Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Butch Shorak. It's Options University. It's Monday, August 5th, 2013. Welcome to Market Forecast. Access to this video is for educational and informational purposes only. Nothing contained in this video, website, or promotional material constitutes a promotion, recommendation, solicitation, or offer of any particular investment, security, or transaction. Options University provides educational services that are meant to teach you the risks and rewards of trading stocks and options. We're not a service that tells you what to trade. We're not implying or guaranteeing any profit. And as always, do not trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. Looking at the week that just took place, looking at the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P 500, Russell 2000, look at those numbers, every single one of them in positive numbers. The lagger for the week was the Dow, up only six-tenths of a percent. Looking at the NASDAQ, up 2.1 percent. Big winner for the week, S&P 500, up 1.1 percent. And the Russell uh, 2000, right in there at 1.2 percent. Look at these lofty years yearly numbers as we look at the percentages for the year of the same respective uh, indices and we see uh, Dow up 19.5 percent, NASDAQ up 22 percent, S&P up 19.9 percent and the Russell 2000 up 24.8 percent. Uh, numbers that would be good for any two or three years combined as we see the indexes showing what no fear really means when you want to head on up. Looking at the week to come, we see that we've got some interesting things coming for the week. We've got uh, ISM manufacturing 10 o'clock on Monday morning. Looking at Tuesday, we have, of course, uh, very little showing on Tuesday. And then as we look at Wednesday, we see also nothing much showing, a little consumer credit at 3 o'clock, which probably won't affect the market all that much. And then Thursday morning, we have our weekly jobless claims, which come out every week. And then Friday, wholesale trade coming out at 10 o'clock after the market opens. So not much there moving the week. As we looked at last week, which was a week that was just loaded with economic announcements, we saw great things happened last week. We saw a Fed announcement where the Fed said that they were going to continue to support the markets. They were concerned about inflation and they did not want inflation to fall below 2%. We also saw some uh, reports at the end of the week that were a bit disappointing uh, as far as employment numbers. Uh, employment went down to 7.4%, which on face would seem like a good move, but we also saw that the uh, number of new jobs did not uh, match what we wanted to see for the previous months. So uh, not much for disappointment. And of course, on Friday, the market shook off uh, that little bit of employment news with the fact that you don't fight the Fed. The Fed said they were going to support the market and the market continued on up. All right, looking at the week that took place the last week. And as we look at this chart, we see a uh, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday showing us little or nothing continuing in that sideways trend that we had uh, been moving in with a kind of a tight trading range and then all of a sudden Thursday what do we call that we call that a breakout and the upward trend of the market continues notice we had an uh, uh, iron cross back a couple weeks ago and you see that the 30 crossed the 50 so the 30 is above the 50 which is above the 200 uptrend intact as the market shows no fear looking at just the last week we see that on Thursday was the day that the market popped to new highs as we are now spending time above 1700 that magic number didn't really provide much resistance as the market just continues its way on up looking at the other indexes let's take a look at the Dow and see what happened with the Dow not the same amount of strength out of the Dow and remember it was the laggard for the week as we saw the sideways consolidation taking place certainly looking at the last six months we see a nice steady uptrend in the Dow and it has been a bit of a leader on the way up but we did not see any huge huge moves out of this at the end of the week this week because the Dow continues to perk along at 15,658.36 to end the week at. All right, next let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Looking at the NASDAQ, another one. There's our big winner, and we see, look at that upward trend, and look at this last move out of the NASDAQ as we see that it's up at 36.89. Will it hit 5,000 again? It's only a matter of time if the market keeps going the way it's going. All right, now let's take a look at Russell 2000. Russell 2000 uh, did have a breakout, but didn't look like the same strength that we saw out of the S&P. 
30 above the 50. In fact, the 30 never got below the 50 on the Russell 2000. And we see the 200 down there, which none of the 200s have been touched in the last six months. So not showing any weak and any weakness in any of our indexes. Let's take a look at some of the sectors that we deal with. Uh, oh, by the way, before we do that, we've got a six-month shot of the uh, VIX here. Notice what happens is we see that the VIX spending its time around 12. Not much fear in the market, not too much volatility in the market. And for you option traders, uh, you're not paying for mu all that much for volatility, as we saw uh, lows on Friday. Looking at the bond market, we see it's going exactly the opposite of the overall market. And we see that bonds have been in a bit of a depression as we see a nice downtrend. So what's the word on bonds? The word on bonds is until we see the Fed change, what we see on bonds is that it is a downtrend and you sell rallies. That's what we see in the bonds. Looking at gold, we see that it's followed exactly the same path, a big, strong downtrend for the last six months. And we see that we're sitting at resistance. Uh, that is our 30-day moving average that it's sitting at. And we can expect to see a lower lows out of gold if the market keeps continuing in its present, vol in present uh, area. Uh, looking at uh, the S&P with volume, we see that the S&P, looking at the last six months, has never even come close to that 200-day moving average, looking at the spider. And we see that we have not had any great month, uh, great weeks of, uh, of uh, volume here. Uh, volume spike about three weeks ago, but uh, our breakout uh, really has not taken place with any more than what one would call average volume. Looking at our financials, XLF, our ETF for the Spider Fund, we see that it continues to follow exactly what the overall market, but we didn't get our breakout when the S&P broke out. Kind of interesting as we haven't seen this uh, breakout, but uh, on a breakout, this is another one that uh, should continue higher as the market continues because of the great support from the Fed. All right, next, let's take a look at oil. Look at that. Oil did nothing for the last six months, and all of a sudden we have a breakout here in July. Hmm, I wonder if there is a coordination between vacation time and oil prices. Oh, could be, as we see oil very near the highs for the last six months. For those of you that are gold members, please stick around and uh, uh, we'll look at our stocks to watch. And for those of you that are not, thank you very much for listening to Options University. And this is Butch Shorak, Options University. It's Monday, August 5th, 2013. Thank you for being here.